In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at continuity at a point. So a function f is said to be continuous at a point, let's say x equals a, provided the limit as x approaches a of f at x is equal to f at a. So there's a lot that's being said in this expression here. First of all, you have the limit as x approaches a of f at x implies that the limit itself exists. So that means the limit from the left and right must equal. And on top of that, it has to equal the function at that value a. When um, a function is not continuous at x equals a, we just use the term discontinuous at that point. So the concept of continuity, if you were to say a function is continuous on its domain, for instance, that's defined pointwise. A function is continuous on its domain if for every single value in the domain, it's continuous. So just to remind you what's being said in this expression is a function is continuous if the limit as x approaches a from the right of the function, that must equal the limit as x approaches a from the left of the function, and that must also equal the function at a. So again, keep in mind when someone writes the limit as x approaches a of f at x, that's implying the limit exists, in which case the limit from the right and left must equal, and on top of that we have the added condition it must equal the function at a. So let's take a look at some examples. So for this first example here, they want to know where is the following function discontinuous? So where, is, where do you have points of discontinuity? Notice here for this function, let's take a look at actually graphing this function here. So for the following question here, we want to know where is the function discontinuous? To tackle this problem here, let's first actually graph this piecewise function. So in the top here, we have a quadratic having vertex at 0, 1. So let's say it's right about here. And um, this is defined when x is less than 0. So that'll be this range right here. So this is my quadratic x squared plus 1 for x is less than 0. Because it's less than 0, we have an open circle. x is less than 0. As soon as it hits 0 here, you see the function takes on a value of 0. So it's going to go down here. And then as soon as it's greater than 0, we end up having the quadratic x squared minus 1. That would look something like this. If you remember previously, we defined a point as being discontinuous as just having a hold or break in the graph. How do you prove this algebraically using our limits? Well, I know that obviously the function itself is continuous everywhere here. right? If I approach any value that's less than 0 from the left or right of this parabola, it'll be continuous. Likewise, any value, any limit that's greater than 0 as I approach it from the left and right, will also, because this is a parabola, will also be continuous. So the only po possible spot of discontinuity lies at zero. So in this case here, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of my function. As I approach zero from the right-hand side of my function, we'd be applying this part of the piecewise function, in which case here, I can go ahead and sub this value here. We get zero, zero squared minus one is negative one. Now if I take the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of this function here, now as I approach it from the left-hand side of 0, we're looking at negative values, and in which case here, as I approach this from the left, this will be end up being 0 squared plus 1 is 1. So right away here, we already know the point is, is discontinuous because the limit as x approaches 0 of this function does not exist. So this function has a point of discontinuity at 0, and it's continuous everywhere else. Let's try another. So for this function here, same idea. They want to know where is this function discontinuous? If you're going ahead and graphing a piecewise function, what you need to do here is notice that the function everywhere but 2, the function is just a linear equation. So let's go ahead and just draw that, assuming that's the actual the whole domain. So in which case, it might look something like this. This would be the line here. This point is your point zero 0,1. That's the y-intercept. Now, turns out that right at 2, x value of 2, we have a very a jump in the graph. Notice when x is 2, this line up here would be the point 3. But that's not going to happen this time. We have an open circle at that value, and it takes on a solid dot here at 1. So the way this function is, is going is it's continuous, 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 continuous. Right at 2, there's that drop in the graph, and because of that break, it's discontinuous. So visually you can see it's discontinuous, but we want to go ahead and develop an algebraic way using our limits and calculus to um, show discontinuity, especially later on when the functions and piecewise functions become far more difficult to graph. So 
at this point here. I know the function is continuous everywhere else. Obviously, this is a linear relationship. We have continuity everywhere. The only issue is right here, right at the value of 2. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the limit as I approach 2 from the right-hand side of my function. As I approach 2 from the right-hand side of my function, we would be under this condition here, in which case this will just end up being 2 plus 1, which is 3. Likewise, if I take the limit as I approach 2 from the left-hand side of my function, uh, once again, you're going to get 2 plus 1, and you're going to get 3. So in this situation here, I know the limit as I approach 2 of my function exists, and it's equal to 3. However, for continuity to be applied, this would have to equal the function at 2. However, the function at 2, as you know here, is equal to 1. So therefore, what we have is the limit does exist. It is equal to 3, but it's not equal to the function at 2. So because of this, we have a point of discontinuous at x equals 2. All right, let's look at another. So for the following functions here, we want to talk about discontinuity. Notice right away, you can see here there's a hole in the graph right at 2, and the function actually does not even exist at 2. Like f at 2 um, does not exist. And the reason for that, you'll notice, is your function f at x factors into x minus 2, x plus 1 over x minus 2. And as you guys know here, these will cancel off. And you actually create a hole in the function at x plus 1. So this function has a hole at x plus 1, um, in which case here, the function is discontinuous. Um, to see that algebraically using your limits, notice the limit as x approaches 2 of this function. If you approach it from the left to right, you guys can check this yourself. Um, as I approach this from the left to right, you're going to get a value of 3. However, the function does not exist at 2. So it cannot equate to f at 2, so you have a point of discontinuity at 2. Let's try another. So for this question here, you notice they've adjusted this situation. Now you're in a situation where there is that hole, but they actually define a point here. So now the function um, does exist at 2. However, if you go to take the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, you guys will see that you will get a value of 3 for this. However, the function at 2 is equal to 1. And because of that, once again, you have a point of discontinuity. So in this example here, this would be discontinuous at x equals 2. For the next example here, we're going to be taking a look at the function f at x. f at x is defined to be the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. And uh, it's denoted with this symbol here. What it returns is the largest integer that's less than, in this case, 2.1. So if you look at your number line, you look at 2.1, what we want to return is the largest integer that's less than that. Well, the largest integer less than that would be 2. Let's take a look at f at 3.4. If you look at f at 3.4, you're going to return the largest integer that's less than that, in which case that would be 3. f at 5.001 would be the largest integer less than 5.001, and if you take a look here, let's suppose 5.0001 is here. The largest integer less than that would be 5. f at pi would be 3. f at root 2, for instance, would be 1. Recall root 2 is approximately 1.41. f at 10 would be 10. f at negative 3.1, for instance, would be negative 4. f at negative 5.2 would be negative 6, etc. Now with this problem here, what we want to do is we want to first talk about uh, what does the floor function look like if we were to graph it. Graph the floor function here. Notice the floor at 0 would be 0. And the floor of anything less than 1 would be also be 0 until you hit 1. Then right at 1, the floor would jump up to be a 1. And then again, anything less than 2 would have a floor of 1. Right at 2, it jumps up. to an output of 2, right? Your floor at 0 is 0. If I took the floor of 0.1, you would also get 0. Now, if I move on and take the floor of 1, we get 1. The floor of 1.01, we get 1. All the way down until you hit 2, and the floor of 2 is 2. And this would continue on in this way with your floor function. And it goes in the other direction as well. 
uh, the floor of negative 1 is obviously negative 1. Let's say you take the floor of negative 0.9. And here the floor of negative 0.9 is negative 1. Keep in mind when you're taking your floor, it's the largest integer that's less than. So that'll be a negative 1 in this case. So it's going to go like that. And then it'll continue on in this way going down. So the question becomes with this uh, floor function is what are the points of discontinuity? Well, we can see them right here. You have these points of discontinuity in the graph. So pretty much that you're in a situation where the floor of x is going to be discontinuous on the set of integers. And your set of integers is denoted like this. So your floor function is discontinuous at all of these integer values. And notice if you take the limit from the left and right, they get different values, so the, so the limit does not exist at each of these values. Notice here if I took the limit as x approaches, let's say, 1 from the right of the floor of x, as I approach 1 from the right of the floor of x, the limit is 1. And if I take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of the floor of x, the limit is 0. So in this situation here, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not equal, and therefore the limit does not exist. Okay, that concludes uh, this example here um, and our description of continuity. So feel free to review these examples, the ones we've done, and re remember that when you're defining continuity, it's the limit as, the, as x approaches a of the function has to equal the function at a. And that's saying the limit from the left and right must equal, and that must equal the function at a. Thank you.